hello hello everybody thank you so much for joining me once again and welcome to another episode of my channel so i just want to say guys you know first video we're able to reach 100 subscribers and that was in the first week so you guys are the real mvps thank you so much and i really 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 appreciate that <clears throat> and um for everybody that's new um even if you're returning and you haven't subscribed yet to do that give it a thumbs up leave me any comments and let's interact on social media so recently my devotions have been focused around anchoring my dreams and really believing that at their appointed time the dreams will eventually reach their point of manifestation and it was such an important thing for me um, to actually share this with you because i know most of us find ourselves in a place where you know your dreams are here and then whenever you are somewhere here right and not by choice but you just keep asking yourself how exactly am i able to reach that point or how exactly do we close that gap and even better when will the gap close because sometimes you find yourself putting in the work um putting in all the things that you know are necessary for you to get to that point but it doesn't seem as if it's moving fast enough or it's moving at your particular pace or it's moving at you know at any pace and i just kept on wondering about it and um during actually one of my devotions this past week um and I shared it with some people on my social media, on one, on my stories. The title of that um, devotional item for that day was titled Hustle. And it was such an interesting one because it was speaking about putting things into action, right? So they were defining hustle as uh, putting all important things into action because action is able to reveal to you options that analysis never will. Okay, I'll say that again. Hustle means to put things into action because action will be able to reveal options to you that analysis never will. And I just resonated with that so much because I found that I'm at a particular stage of my life where I'm trying to understand when the dreams are going to manifest, right? And sometimes when you don't see like the dream coming any closer, you eventually just stop or you think, okay, this is not working out. But it was important for me to also get that sort of message um, into my heart and into my mind because I really needed to hear that for me to continue with the action, to keep on doing whatever it is that I was doing and to keep fighting for the dream that I know God has put in my heart and for the desires that actually set my heart on fire. And um, as I was just going through, you know, this week about that, um, I thought, well, one of the best ways to demonstrate this particular thing is through this book right so this is dreams in a time of war it's by uh Ngugiwa Tiongo. if you don't know dreams in a time of war i suggest you get it or if you don't know Ngugi, i suggest you go and you google and you visit your nearest um kum books or exclusive books and you get this book it is absolutely amazing and I decided that I'm going to share it with you guys because I really found a lot of things within this book that I resonated with so, 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 so much. And, um, you know, usually they say don't judge a book by its cover. But this one, when I saw it, I really judged it by its cover. Well, in this case, I judged it by its title. Um, and actually, I think I finished it um, about three or four days ago. Um, and I just said, I just have to share this with you guys. I got mine at ex kum books um and i'll just leave some of the details if you don't know the book i'll just leave it in the description box so the book is a memoir of ngugi's childhood from the time he's around nine until um he's about 16 where he's he finishes off um his early years of schooling and he's eventually admitted into high school and for him the um, the journey or the next step of going into high school was such a big validation for his dreams coming true and the bigger vision of him acquiring an education and pushing himself further in life and you know when i tried to contextualize you know the theme of the book and 
the ability for one to follow their passions and for one to fight for their dreams no matter the sort of obstacles that get in their way i remember um this song by msaki right i think she wrote the the lyrics for this part that she sings in the song yeah fit your life and it basically says that most of us we live for the weekend to numb out the damage of not being in aligned with our dreams but the most important thing is that we fetch our lives you know um fetch your dreams fetch 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 everything that you know belongs to you fetch fetch everything man go for it all and keep continuing to push towards what you know belongs to you what you know sets your heart on fire and i love that song and when i thought of uh, after i finished this book and I just basically summarized it in my mind. That was the song that kept on coming to me. But this is a man who went and fetched his life, you know. So for me, dreams are anchored on promises, right? And it's important to understand that because you'll 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 realize that the promise becomes the sort of guarantee that keeps you going, even when it doesn't seem as if the dream is getting any closer to you. And so in the book, the thing that I believe, you know, set the the tone for the way Ngugi would pursue everything that he wanted was the first promise that he made to his mother, but most importantly, the promise that he made to himself, right? So it starts off one evening when Ngugi's mother asks him if he wants to go to school. Now, just to give a little background on that, Ngugi lived during colonial Kenya period and during the Mau Mau struggle for independent Kenya against the British colonies, right? So obviously we know that not everybody had access to education and not everybody could easily just move around anywhere they wanted to in order to access any even other sort of, you know, um, facilities that they needed to. and. If you remember correctly, um, in the previous video, I was saying that it's important for us to develop uh, an all-rounded fitness. And so this book is not just, you know, a nice uh, pet uh, uh, for a person who wants to, you know, pursue their dreams and to go fetch their lives. But it also gives a great history class for a lot of people that uh, maybe need some reminding of our continent and where we come from all right short so um it starts off when his mom asks me if he wants to go to school right the first time he ignores it he plays around with nyana and the second time the mother says yay i asked do you want to go to school and so sorry can i just let me just wear my glasses <laughs> And then he responds, yes, yes. I quickly said in case she changed her mind. And the mom responded, you know we're poor. And he said, yes. And she said, and so you may not always get a midday meal. And he said, yes, mother. And then she says, promise me that you'll not bring shame to me by one day refusing to go to school because you are hungry or any other hardships. And then he responds, yes. And then she says, and that you will always try your best. And then he responds in the book, I would have promised anything in that moment, but when I looked at her and said yes, I knew deep inside me that she and I had made a pact. I would always try my best, whatever the hardships, whatever the barriers. I think this part was so important um, for us to know the reason why he continued to pursue everything the way that he did, right? Um, the, this was the setting pace and which is exactly why I say that um, dreams will always be anchored on the promise. If there's no promise, it's difficult to understand why exactly you're doing it, right? And the promise is always the guarantee. It's always the thing that says to you, this is why we're doing it. It's, it's the thing that says oh, there is a cause and there is, you know, a vision in, in the back there. And that is what we're aiming towards. And until you have that, it's also, it's, it's kind of difficult to, you know. And that is where I found myself a lot, where I understood the dream, but I couldn't exactly find where the promise was. And that, you know, caused me to keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But the most important thing for me was trying to say to myself, what are the promises of God for my life? What has God promised me? What have we 
you know how what have we discussed as far as you know the the, the the desires of my heart and the things that set my heart on fire and those were the things that would always allow me to keep holding on to the vision that even when things didn't seem as though they were going in order even though they didn't seem as if they were going the way uh i wanted to it would always keep me rooted so one of the other parts of the book which i liked was during um an, a narrative of Ngui coming back from school and um he was he was, he was going to give his mom um his test results right so he had eventually written like a few tests and he had failed a couple of times was getting zero out of ten but then there came a time where you know he started getting the hang of school and started understanding what exactly is required of him and then he eventually got 10 out of 10. so now he goes to his mom very proudly uh to present to her that look i got 10 out of 10 right and his mom's response just kills me so he gets 10 out of 10 and he goes and shows his mom and his mom responds is that the best that you could have done <laughs> So guys, this is not a malicious question, right? And then Gugi says, um, this is a question that she will keep on asking in response to my schoolwork, my class exercises and tests. Is that the best you could have done? Even when I tell her proudly that I scored 10 out of 10, she asks the question in different ways until I say, yes, I had tried my best. Strange, she seems more interested in the process of getting there rather than the actual results. Guys, I... I honestly love that question i love that question and the moment that I, I i i came across this passage of the book i decided you know what i'm going to challenge myself man. because for me i don't think Googie's mother was asking him in a very malicious way to say you know like oh i pay so much school fees and you're gonna give me 10 out of 10 you know um but she was asking him because i think a part of like for me reading it, my interpretation was almost as if like she wanted to understand if he felt validated in that work. If he felt that he had impressed like his, his entire being into everything that he had done. And if that work could actually represent what the best is defined as, right? And for me, I had to challenge myself and to say, you know, after every major project that I do, if after every work that I do, after um, everything after every step that I, I take in order to reach my dreams, my uh, my vision, I'll have to keep reflecting. One of the best reflective methods that I could do for myself is to ask myself, okay, is that the best that you could have done? Even when you know, like the atmosphere around you seems very happy and everybody seems proud and you know, everything around you seems positive. But the question, the, the answer to that question is such an important reflection for yourself. Because others might um, think that, oh, wow, it's so great. But you deep down inside, you're like, but, but I know that that wasn't the best I could have done. I did a good job, but it wasn't the best. I remember the time I was in um, high school, actually, and I was speaking to um, this, this guy. At, at the time, he was... The, you know top student he was like really really good at, at at the things that he just did and so i remember um we had to do a speech together and during that that time um you know i was very proud of you know my own work and stuff like that and um and i think at that time i'd gotten like um like i think the mark at the time was 82 percent or something like that and so um i'm there you know like looking all happy and then he says to me something that was very very important that i still hold on to till this day he says Kokes, you should never ever settle right and he says i know you think it's good <laughs> and it is good but don't ever settle right don't ever be content with just that because the moment you become content with just that you 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 end up settling and i'm like huh but 82 percent is so good and it was like no 82 percent is definitely good but it just means you don't know 18 percent of what you're doing and i was like what <laughs> did this guy just say this to me but i think in that moment it was such a deep reflection and i said i don't know 18 percent uh -huh, guys i don't know 18 percent and obviously 82 is greater than 18 but when you think about it in hindsight you're like damn 18 percent is a lot how can you not know 18 percent of this particular thing right and i mean obviously we'll never know 
um everything and 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 the thing that i'm trying to get across is, is not to say okay we must always be getting hundreds and like this 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 because we'll never actually know everything but i think for me the the thing to take there was the lesson of it of not being content with just doing the bare minimum or whatever it is that or if you've achieved this in the past it's okay to want to go further it's what it's okay to want more it's okay to ask yourself what is that the best that i could have done even when you get 10 out of 10 even when you can get 100 ask yourself is that the best that i could have done because it it will give you an opportunity to reflect it will give you an opportunity to say to yourself but you know what actually i don't think this is what i want to do or this is what i should be doing or i don't think i should do it in this method or even better it can give you um a, a better perspective of all the other options that are available to you to be more creative to be more innovative right remember action reveals options that analysis never will right to do it to do it to do it to do it gives you the opportunity to do so many great things and i really loved that um and i mean it's a challenge that i'm posing to you um to ask yourself every time you do something that is very important to you every time you do something that is supposed to be one of the anchors that hold your life ask yourself is that the best that i could have done i know like a part of me sounds like yeah i've got this all you know wrapped up and ready to go but i'm actually on that journey myself i'm on that journey where a lot of the times i don't feel as if my dreams are coming any closer to me you know but one of the most important things that i have learned through this thing is that it's all about growth you know it's about growth and um like i said that it's so important for me to hold on to the promises of god and here's the thing i love in the second book of timothy chapter 2 verse 13 the bible says that god is faithful right and even when we are unfaithful god remains faithful because he cannot deny who he is and that says that you know when god gives you a promise and he says that he's going to fulfill it no. god is going to fulfill it not because you beg him to do it not because you'll throw stones at him not because you'll throw yourself on the floor and throw a tantrum and and just be like ah oh, you know what i don't care anymore but god is faithful to himself and he fulfills that particular promise because he made it he vowed and he said that no this is what i want to do and because he said it he is going to fulfill it because he's faithful to himself he cannot deny who he is he's a god of promise right and it was so important um uh, uh, to to for me to keep on holding to that because sometimes things don't seem like they're working out things don't seem as if they are coming together man and you're asking yourself hey what am i actually doing here what am i what am i even doing at all and it's so important that we continue to hold on to the promises of god go have a conversation with your father and say lord what are the promises here lord show me the promises and you declare them back to god and say god this is what what you said in your word this is what you have said and because i know you are faithful you cannot deny who you are even when i'm unfaithful lord you remain faithful and i know that you will bring it to manifestation right uh the bible in the book of philippians says that i'm confident that he who has begun a good work in you shall continue to fulfill it he shall continue to give it to you he, he shall continue to make sure that the road is cleared the, the the path is cleared for you because from the time he, he promised he's going to fulfill it right and so the last part of the book you know uh, of Ngugi's journey uh, in the book sees him being admitted into high school uh, into one of Kenya's most prestigious high schools and he has to go and catch a train in order to get there because it's a boarding school and so um they weren't you know um proper arrangements made for him as far as getting a pass is concerned um and the pass is just basically like like an id sort of thing i believe in south africa would uh, it was called a dom pass uh which just allowed you to move around in case you bumped into any of you know the marshals or any of those policemen but in in, in summary he basically didn't have one and so he was denied access into the train um and i think that was such a devastating moment for him because it was almost as if it was saying you're not gonna reach your dream you're not gonna reach the journey right but eventually a good samaritan comes along and makes arrangements that help him to get onto another train not the best train it's actually a goods train so it's carrying things like boxes it's carrying items it's carrying um you know all sort of work machinery and um 
he, he says this in the story and he says before he finished talking along comes a good train it is not a smooth looking passenger train as i had hoped for but i follow him to the last car he has made arrangements i get into the car i am surrounded by workmen's tools and clothes i can smell their sweat but it doesn't matter the car has no windows so i don't see the landscape the journey feels like one of a thousand miles i'm numb with fear that something will happen to me to stop me from catching up to my dreams and i resonated a lot with that particular journey and with this particular scene that he set out because i think a lot of us might actually uh, find ourselves where we're where we're working towards our journey but you know the surrounding places do not seem like this is the proper route right um you'd hope for a good nice comfortable passenger train instead you get a good train that smells like sweat smells like tools smells like oil right uh you'd wanted maybe um more comfort within that particular train to 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 lead you towards the journey but that's not what happened right he sat in a good train and he couldn't even there was no window so probably he wasn't even breathing properly because all the because it's quite closed so he doesn't even see the landscape he can't see where he's going actually but he knows he's going there right and i resonated so much with that and i had to keep telling myself that the journey is so important and it's important for you to trust the process and to trust the fact that this journey is the right journey i am where i am because um you know god has allowed me to be on this particular path i am where i am because god has ordained me for this particular moment and it's okay when the journey or when the landscape does not seem like it's the right one because of where you know the vision is looking at but the most important thing is that we're going there the most important thing is to trust the promises of god to trust the promise and to hold on to that promise because that's the one that's going to anchor you and make sure that you continue holding on to the dream the last part of it um of the book says that he eventually arrived um at the um, at way at at the school's bus stop where they're supposed to pick up all the children and eventually gets on the, the the bus with everybody else and he says it was in this moment that he got a sigh of relief um that he gave out a sigh of relief and um he says and then i hear my mother's voice no oh he says that i see a billboard with banner letters so personal that i think it must have been for me alone and the billboard says welcome to alliance high school in that moment i hear my mother's voice is this the best that you could do and i say to her with all my heart yes mother because i also know what she's really asking for is my renewal of our pack to have dreams even in a time of war <sighs> did you feel that because i felt that inside you know um he kept on hearing his mother's voice saying is that the best that you could have done even when he arrives at his high school and he he's now within that element of his dreams coming true and he says it with all his heart and says yes this is the best i could have done and um the way he summarized that he knew that every time she asks that question it's a question that allows him to renew the pack and that's important remember i said this is a challenge for us right to continue asking ourselves if that is the best that we could have done to keep renewing that pact to ourselves to keep saying to ourselves that is this the best that we could have done and we are really going forward with everything that we want to do ah guys i i really enjoyed this book i really enjoyed this book and you know what i i don't even think i'm doing justice to it because i'm only um reflecting on it as far as what my journey in the past week has really been like or more of my devotions have have been like and i'm just you know trying to marry the two items especially because i could um remember a few things from here which were you know buzzing within my own de devotions but um in in all honesty guys i really recommend that you get this book um when you read it you even realize that like, you weren't doing justice to this book this book is absolutely fantastic shout out to ngudua tiongo a son of the soil and africa's one of africa's best authors you know um and you know um here at the back it says uh, moving honest and informative this is a book about the influence of stories storytelling and storytellers it is a reminder that every generation however beleaguered can dream to change the world guys we need to dream we really need to continue dreaming continue holding on to the faith and remember that 
seasons come and seasons go ne? during every situation that you find yourself even if you think that it's not appropriate the season for you is not appropriate um and that you seem like you're deviating from the path just continue holding on to the promise remember the promise keep holding on to it right because god is faithful right he's faithful to you and he's faithful to himself and even more important nothing lasts forever except god and his word seasons come seasons go um heaven and earth may pass away but the word of the lord remains forever and ever so thank you so much for joining me again um remember to get the book and um share it with other people on your social media um if you read a chapter a day you know um give me feedback as to what exactly you think of the book uh what you're feeling about it and how you've encountered it and how you reflect with most of the passages that are in the book if you do at all and let's continue you know spreading the love sharing the love um remember to subscribe leave me any comments and give it a thumbs up i'm available on social media instagram and facebook and yeah guys um i really appreciate you i love you all um yeah have a good day bye